It's an unpleasant emotion, sometimes even a dangerous one. But there's another side to jealousy that can be helpful, especially in romantic relationships. Jealousy is a great indicator that we care about someone and oftentimes has to do with our fear of losing influence over that person. According to research psychologist Jolie Hamilton, it lights up internal problems we may be experiencing that could have come from an experience in our past. But when we take the time to acknowledge, understand, and work through jealousy, we lighten the load and can make space to be happy about something that's making a romantic partner happy instead. Hamilton says that's called compersion. It's a common practice in non-monogamous relationships. Compersion is an antonym to jealousy. It is the sensation that we have when we are watching like a little kid have an ice cream cone, but we are lactose intolerant and we're like, I cannot enjoy that joy, but I am so glad you are happy right now. And no matter the type of relationship, compersion can be a healthy practice for everyone. Mm, I fundamentally disagree. This right here, uh, by the way, I pulled this off of NPR, so it's public domain. Don't get, don't flag me for that. I just, I'm just putting that out there. This is the kind of crap that I have to do. This is the, you want to know what like makes Rolo Tomasi freaking crazy? This shit makes me crazy. This makes me absolutely fucking batshit insane. Compersion. Let's make up some crap word. Let's make up some bullshit where you want to talk about me like redefining hypergamy. Let's make up some bullshit word that is the opposite of jealousy. No, it's not. There's a reason for why you feel the base emotion of jealousy. And it has nothing to do with compersion or any of this other crap. You do that because it is a protection device. It's a protection mechanism. Mate guarding is jealousy. Jealousy is something that we say, well, that's mine and I, you ain't touching mine. Because if I do, if I'm not jealous, I lose that thing and I might die as a result of that. I might not reproduce as a result of that. What this is, is it's some cutesy, you know, uh, ch children's illustration book ex rationalization for a, a jealousy as a social construct or jealousy as a, a, a psychological disorder. It's not a disorder. It is a feature, not a bug embrace that jealousy boy i'll tell you right now will smith you know that protection instinct is derived that mate mate guarding that's derived from that jealousy that's where that comes from and you can call it whatever you want you can put ice cream cones on it and sugar coat it and put m m's on top it's still the same pile of shit and the idea that we should feel good about somebody cheating on us there's never been a more well, gynocentric serving idea than that. So when you see Jack Murphy or you see these guys popping off about how, Oh, I'm, I'm in a poly relationship. I'm in an open marriage. Remember uh, uh, Will Smith and Jada were in supposed to be in this great relationship. We have a really strong relationship. He was trying to relate that and apologize profusely to Oprah Winfrey in that in interview in the, in the very beginning of today's show, he was, tr he was doing his damnedest to make sure that that was, that was there was nobody there was no confusion about this right and then as of september of last year oh we're actually in an open relationship that doesn't work that is a bad idea poly is a bad idea the reason why we're thinking these things up right now by the way is because we're we're in um, what aaron clary has called a post marriage world we're trying to figure out how men and women are going to get along start families have healthy relationships together and we're do, we're trying to do this without marriage and polly is one of these you know these uh great uh, well we're all we all want to fuck each other we're all bonobos right we all want to bang each other right and so we got to figure out we got to find some way to rationalize like globally like like collectively rationalize why jealousy is a bad thing jealousy is a, like jealousy is only a bad thing if you're if you're the one who's jealous right if you're the one who's losing out if you have the 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 what is it uh, opportunity cost you're the one that the that that other person's actions uh, are, are 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 placing upon you an opportunity cost yeah yeah women and men and women by the way get jealous for different things women are get jealous for emotional investment when men where'd you fuck them in the kitchen in the bathroom in the bed where tell me paternity they're they're interested in paternity and so of course the cutesy way is like well you should feel good about your partner wanting to feel good yeah let's look at what's going on with jack murphy <laughs> 
You know, oh, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm a stronger, more masculine, like this right here, that, that, that cutesy little cartoon, that's the equivalent right there. That's the female kid, like stupid, you know, bonehead equivalent of the, uh, the, the infamous blog post about, I, I cut my wife out and I, I feel like I'm more of a man because I do that. I'm more, ins- I'm secure. I'm glad she's out there having a good time. No, you're not, you know, you don't, you don't give two shits about her. You don't care about your paternity. That's for damn sure. And I'll argue this is that uh, guys who are in poly relationships or think that they are in poly relationships, for the most part, that's become a mating strategy for beta males right now. I'll talk about that more in, a, in another podcast. I've gotten into it in the past too. Um, so, um, so anyways, uh, last but not least, when we talk about uh, women's, women's past, when women uh, had uh, their Tupac Shakur's, when women have had the, the August Alcinas, and they're pining for those. If you're the if you're the guy, if you're the beta who has you know benefits that they bring to the table that kind of offset what what she's going through, what she needs, her most necessary needs at that time, and she marries you, even though she didn't want to marry a guy like like Will, she wanted to marry Tupac. She wanted to marry a, a, a guy like Tupac or a guy like you know, August Alsina, but they didn't. They weren't nearly as paid as somebody like Will Smith. And Will Smith was just. I, I would say most of this is all. Well, half of this, let's just say, is on Will Smith and his beta blue pill mentality. But the other half is definitely on Jada and women like Jada. So when women get into that situation and they cheat on their husband, they come back to their husband from cheating with their Tupac or their personal trainer or whatever. And having any any sex with that guy now feels like cheating on the guy she was cheating with. So if she was a go, if she was with the the personal trainer or if she was with the Tupac or the guy who's outside the marriage, that guy rocked her world. Going back into the marriage and putting up that front and saying everything's fine and and hiding it and trying to keep the logistics going and uh you know oh, I'm not real I'm uh, you know you're basically getting cucked but she's trying to convince you that you're not getting cucked. Any sex that you have with her is all compromised. Certainly transactional, but it's all compromised because. Women feel like they're cheating, not on you, but on the guy who rocked the, the real guy or their soulmate, the guy who's outside the marriage that they've been cheating with. They feel like they're cheating on him by having sex with her husband, by having sex with the guy that she's supposed to be with, who's, you know, they have a commitment and can maybe kid, well, in this case, kids. So I would argue that the situation with, with, uh, with data is it's, it's like, Will can't compete with the ghost of Tupac, but furthermore, she can't compete with the, he can't compete with the fantasy of the guy that she really wants to fuck. And it's getting to the point right now where she won't, she doesn't need him anymore. You will say, I I think there probably will be a divorce at some point here. I think there will be a separation and a divorce. There will be a, certainly be a split. And uh, I, you know, I hate to use my good friend, Robert Kiyosaki, but like he's going through a split right now with his wife and has had something similar said to him. I don't need you anymore. And literally it's true. I don't need you anymore. I can get, I have enough money to, uh, in spades, I have enough money to, to ensure my long-term security for the rest of my life. And now I want the hot guy in the foam cannon party. Now I want what I missed out on. Now I know I can go back and get that. And even if that's not like, you know, I'm saying in figure of sense, but even if that's not like physically true, the want and the desire for that is absolutely true. Even if that woman can't like physically make that happen. So Will is fighting against the, two, the, 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 the ghost of Tupac for sure, but he's also fighting against the, the entitlement or the impression that Jada, bald ass Jada, can still go get with a guy like August Alsina if she wants to. And she could leave at any time. Like, I, one thing I don't think enough people are talking about is he could leave whenever he wants. She could leave whenever she, if she wants. And, you know, she doesn't have to ruin him. She could just pick up and go anytime she wants to, but she doesn't. And she hasn't. I mean, she could have done it a long time ago. She could have done it right after, August, you know, cheating on, with August, but she didn't. Why is that? Does she enjoy like torturing Will? There might be, you you might be able to make a case for that. 